Hey everybody, what's going on? This is your broadcaster, Master Cloud, and I am back for another cast of The Lord of the Rings, A Battle for Middle-Earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King of Agmar. Today's matchup is going to be a one versus one. It is a continuation of the last series. It is going to be game five between the two brothers spawning in the lower right-hand side as men is going to be turn 86. And his brother and his opponent for this game in this best of five is going to be D-Ginges for the purposes of this game, referred to as DJ. Guys, this is going to be a men versus men, Gondor versus Gondor. And uh, this is going to be for all of the... Um, all of the cash, so to say, as uh, actually they might be splitting it up. I'm not exactly sure how the uh, the money actually will be split up. But regardless, this will be for all the marbles. This will be for the championship, as this is going to be game five in the series. Both players going for that barracks off after the two quick farms, and uh, we're going to be seeing a very hopefully interesting matchup here, as this is game five. As everything is now on the line. Uh, this is the map is going to be Fords of Eisen. This is the third time they've played on this map. Both of them obviously favoring it very, uh, very much. Uh, as we've only seen a couple of uh, other maps, this one is incredibly balanced, though, and that's why the players love to play on it. Both players looks like uh, Gondor soldiers here, and I would assume to see Gondor soldiers from uh, turn as well. Yes, we do. Now guys, as this game gets underway here, if you haven't seen those previous games, you can find them on my channel, Game 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it looks, uh, if I recall here, Turin uh, won the first game, DJ claims claimed the second victory, Turin had an amazing comeback in the third, and then DJ straight out basically won, um, straight up won the last game, num game number 4, and so we are now on to game number 5, where it is going to be a battle, a mirror matchup here, and this is going to be for all the marbles preemptively Turin throws down the rallying call I guess he assumed he would meet these soldiers and they are going to engage here now Turin does set his units on defensive stance DJ does the same here and this is going to be a very slow battle as these both both of these units trying to slowly beat down each other taking trying to take as few casualties as possible a second unit of Gondor soldiers for DJ heading down to the south DJ picking red every time I believe uh, as that must be his favorite color pink has been the choice for Turin. Turin sending an additional uh, unit of Gondor soldiers across the river here. Are they actually going to go for the wharves or are they just looking for some possible farms? I think uh, one of them might get caught there at the edge. Yes, he does. So a little bit of a misstep here, I think, by Turin. But either way, he's going to run into an additional unit of Gondor soldiers and the uh, rogue unit of Gondor soldiers around the bottom side here uh, has not been spotted yet by Turin. It looks like in the center, pretty even battle, although I think DJ has a couple more units here. It's so close, but with the reinforcements here from Turin, he will take that battle and claim the center for himself. However, at the same time, he still has not caught uh, caught wind of the secret unit of Gondor soldiers moving around to the lower left-hand side here. The group sent by Turin that got caught by the wargs looks like they are going to get picked up here. And at this exact second, I realize I forgot to turn on health bars. I know a lot of you guys mentioned that in the last game, and can I do it right now? Yes, I actually it should be on. So I'm not sure why they are not showing up, but uh, might be a little glitch in the patch there. I'll try and keep guys selected though, obviously, so we can go ahead and uh, see their health uh, through some of these battles. With the farm going down there, uh, this unit of Gondor soldiers is going to finally get caught here as Turin has finally found it. And basically, Conan, although they might get the builder there, that would be a great pickup. Nope, throws down the farm there just in case. And we actually have a archery range up here uh, for Turin. Turin has a group of archers out as well. Should be able to pick off these Gondor soldiers with those archers uh, from afar now that they are out. Now, what has DJ gone for? DJ opting to go for the stable, so we finally see a little bit of a difference here. DJ also throwing down the archery range, but does have a unit of those Gondor Knights now out on the field. And those Gondor Knights are going to be incredibly effective against these foot soldiers. I don't think Turin has seen this yet. Uh, and if he does not know this is coming, he's going to be continuing to produce. No, he must have. Uh, he has a single unit of spearmen out on the field. Either he uh, saw it or sensed it. Either way, these Gondor uh, Knights are not going to be nearly as effective with the spearmen in the army. However, that being said, he still needs to make sure these spearmen are in the right position. Otherwise, these Gondor soldiers are easily going to trample a couple of uh, rogue units around the map. Specifically this one down here. Actually, these Gondor soldiers uh, for DJ should win this battle, I believe, as they are at level 2 versus a level 1. Actually, losing quite a few there, and he does not want to lose this unit if he 
can help it. He wants to keep that level 2 unit alive, but it looks like there's going to be a fight here to, to the lower hands, to the lower side of the Fortress of Turin. Throws down the Rallying Call on as many troops as he can. A Rallying Call goes down from DJ as he looks like he wants to fight now at this time too, but he doesn't have the Archer support that Turin does, and he, despite even throwing these guys into that defensive stand, it's, I don't think is going to be enough, especially with the Archers in the back here. More Spearmen out as well for Turin. Now Turin looking to be in a pretty good spot here. I love how oh, he has his troops positioned here. That archer support in the back, incredibly effective. The Gondor soldiers, or Gondor knights, do get one pretty good charge through the front of the battle there. But that is uh, about all they're going to get, as I think these archers are going to make short work of all the remaining troops here. Once again, trying to get a charge on some of the soldiers, but it's just not enough. These archers focusing down the ground troops for now. Uh, the horsemen will get away. But uh, with very little damage done, I think Turin was very much the victor of that uh, battle. Single unit of Gondor soldiers for DJ trying to escape to the north. They've been scouted out by a couple units here and are on the run for now. Or actually uh, decided to stop and catch their breath for a second. But uh, definitely wanted to get out of that territory there. Now, do we have an upgraded stables? That's what I think I would like to see out of... DJ, but it's that he's going for the archers as well. So he's decided to go for the uh, uh, go for the archer support, similar to how Turin was doing it. Although at this point, I feel like he's playing a catch up a little bit. Although he does have a pretty sizable army here, I guess he just has more farms possibly than DJ or than uh, Turin. Turin has a couple of units to the north, though. He's going to want to possibly either send those in to do a huge attack or recall them, as he does have a very large army at his front door here. How is he going to decide to engage this? The angle's a little weird with a bunch of units out in front. Uh, a couple of the horsemen get caught in the back by the spearmen there. Uh, the archers are out in front. Uh, Turin decides to just fall back, not engage. Now he changes his mind. We'll go ahead and take out that group of archers there. The group to the uh, bottom has now run into Boromir. Turin, uh, uh, Turin has gone for the hero. That's why uh, DJ has so many more troops out on the field, or at least momentarily he did. Uh, but Boromir here going to be working down a lot of these troops. Once he gets up to level 2, can use that Horn of Gondor. That's what he's going to be waiting for. Uh, allows his troops to regroup, and all of a sudden this battle is going to go incredibly in favor of Turin as he now can throw down the Horn, which he will do immediately. These units are now stunned for a good uh, couple seconds here, and they will quickly and very efficiently get picked off here by the remaining troops of Turin. Turin's group around the backside as well might grab a farm, make, might grab a few units. That's going to be a level 2 farm, so that's a really good pickup uh, for Turin there. In the meanwhile, though, uh, or meanwhile, I should say, he's going to lose a couple troops in the north here. An arrow drop goes down by uh, Turin to try and steer that off. A group of archers coming out, but they see a bunch of horsemen as they basically see daylight there, and will all get trampled. Uh, both units going down. Did he lose the builder in that? Uh, is the question. I think the answer is yes. Oh, actually, the answer is no. Actually, as that builder did survive, it's right there. But he did lose a couple of units there, uh, the farm as well. So that's a little bit of a, of a loss there for him. But really, he's sitting in a great spot because he has Boromir out of the field now. What is the response going to be uh, from DJ? At this time, he has Gollum sneaking around the backside of his base here. But uh, that's not really going to help him in terms of uh, winning this battle. What he needs is a hero of his own, and he's decided to go for Bormir as well. Both heroes now out on the field, uh, Bormir on the, out on the field for both teams, I should say. Looks like these units are going to be focusing the war glare, but uh, aren't in the really best position. Does get a really great rally call down, but he's in a really awkward position here. I feel like DJ actually has the better position here if he wants to engage. Uh, decides to pull back instead, though. I guess doesn't want to get caught out of the caught out there. Uh, as he's feeling a little bit nervous with that Horn of Gondor uh, available for Turin, and he does not have it yet, of course, for his board mirror. I think that's going to be the difference in the upcoming battle here. If one of those players gets that Horn of Gondor down and decimates the other troops, uh, or the other army's uh, troop, it's going to be basically GG. Turin is slowly pushing forward here. Does have Faramir out now as well, the two brothers out on the field of, uh, of battle here. Turin does throw down his Gondor Horn, Boromir for... DJ not yet level 2, trying to get up there desperately as fast as he can. A couple of units coming in from the backside, but DJ is losing a lot of troops here in this skirmish. Boromir finally gets up to level 2. Has he lost enough? I'm not sure he has. Boromir can throw down that Horn of Gondor at this point. The arrow drop goes down as well. A good unit of Turin's army actually falls there. 
as suddenly DJ is looking to be in a commanding position. I'm not so sure how he won that battle so convincingly. I guess all of his units very appropriately placed into defensive mode. Farmer extending way too far here. He has commands to enter the battle, but he's already gone past it. As these troops begin to get chased down, Farmer is slowly picking off a couple of units from the back, but it's not going to be enough, at least for now, um, to stall this push from DJ. Warmer takes a lot of damage there. He's going to fall back. Could throw down the horn if he so chooses. How many of his units are actually in range? A couple actually. Actually grabs all those units with that horn, uh, with the power of that horn. Farmer in the backside, continuing to deal damage. But I'm not sure Turn here has the reinforcements uh, to hold off this push. Actually, he does have the reinforcements. He just needs to bring them up. Um, he's a little bit distracted right now, probably trying to uh, focus on his heroes. Farmer up to level 3 already. Boromir up to level 4 on defensive stance right now to try and make him survive this battle as long as possible. Wants to keep these heroes alive if he can. The units now reinforcing for Turin and things are looking a little bit better for Turin as Boromir grabs another level. I believe the enemy Boromir for DJ um, is going to have fallen here. I don't see him in the battle so I think he did indeed fall, possibly taken out by Boromir himself. A group of horsemen around the backside. DJ doing an excellent job with these horsemen. Been harassing all game. Might get an additional farm here, and yes, he will grab it at the last second there. Those units are up to level 2 now, and can retreat if they so choose. There's actually two groups of horsemen there. Uh, will DJ go ahead and pull those back? Not after he, or right after he gets a good trample through, and takes out basically an entire group of archers there. Finally, we see the stables coming out there uh, for Turin. In the center, the battle has finally uh, finished up, it looks like, with Turin being the victor, but just barely. Boromir, level 5, uh, remains alive. Faramir, at level 5 now as well. So the hero situation looking very good for Turin, but the army situation for DJ looking to be a little bit stronger overall, I think. He has a couple of units to the south, possibly for a flanking maneuver if Turin decides to push through here at the center. But this battle will continue, uh, at least for now, as these horsemen push forward. And actually, maybe a little too far forward, their reinforcements are arriving, though. Uh, Faramir leading the charge here with a couple of pikemen. I'm not sure if that's exactly what he needs right now. These Gondor, Gondor knights actually engage. The rally call goes down from behind with Turin's other units. Can Boromir throw down the horn? Not yet. He needs a couple more seconds, but he's not going to matter because these horsemen can easily chase down these troops. The troops at the bottom forgotten by DJ. I think he's making a mistake right now. It does have some uh, Gondor Tower guards out now as well, though. But he just lost basically two units for nothing there. Uh, that's almost 400. I believe, I believe that's 400. No, 500 units right down the drain. Boromir is now out as well uh, again here as he did die for DJ. Now the battle is going to be taking place here at the very front of the base of DJ. Summons go down from both players. The horsemen in the back from Turin, the hobbits for DJ. And these horsemen are just plowing through everything right now. Most of the hobbits get ran over almost immediately here. Uh, Boromir grabs a level there for DJ, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough turn here. Looking to be in a commanding position. I mean, there's a single unit of Gondor soldiers around the bottom, or on the top side there. These two units completely forgotten by uh, DJ, and he's falling apart here at, at this last second. The farm goes up to level three, gets that arrow ability, but at the same time, it's going to get taken out by those summoned Rohirrim. These units finally being remembered uh, by DJ. He for sure wishes he had those in that previous battle. Uh, Farmer taking a little bit of damage here from Frodo as he is focusing down with those very uh, intense blue stones. It looks like no, no. <laughs> Frodo gets picked off there by Faramir at the last second. A couple units of pikemen coming out as well. DJ trying everything he can right now to hold on uh, to this to his castle, I guess, or to his base here for this last battle. But he is going to lose his barracks there. He does have an additional one to the north, but he's just taking so much damage. I think Turin has too much here. DJ is throwing all these troops down to the south. He needs to pull back. Why is he engaging wars right now when his fortress is about to fall? Does he really believe he has enough here to actually hold this off? Uh, with Boromir still alive, archers in the back here. Turin reinforcing has troops uh, streaming across the map. Look at the amount of reinforcements Turin is uh, throwing here. Rebuild goes down to try and save the, save the stables, but I'm not even sure that's going to be enough to actually save it. He's trying to throw down additional barracks to get out the units he needs. 
but I think the uh, damage out from here from turn is just too great, and uh, DJ looking to be in a lot of trouble. He might actually have enough here to hold off. It's going to be close. Uh, will lose that stables. Will those units actually get out? Yes, they do. Those Gunner Soldiers or Gunner Knights actually do manage to get out. Doing a weird stutter step dance there to get out, but they do uh, manage to. Will get a nice charge on some of the archers. But the additional reinforcements from turn have now arrived. The push at the front is going to be too great. I don't think he has the uh, resource income right now to go ahead and continue to fight this war of attrition. He is using this fountain to try and heal his units as best as he can, trying to be as cost, if, cost efficient as possible. But with Bormir now up to level 7, all these units have the leadership bonus. Rally Call goes down on top of it. I'm not even sure if that stacks. Uh, but irregardless, this archery range is going to fall before the unit of archers can get out. More reinforcements arriving. The troop of Gondor soldiers and archers down in the bottom side looks like they've been taken out. These guys have basically called a truce right now. Uh, but let's go back to the action, where the action is. As an archery drop goes down there, takes on a majority of those troops a little bit of uh, lag there either in the game. Uh, or uh, I guess that's just saved right into the replay there. But either way, those units are all dead and turret... Uh, DJ now looking like he might be able to just hold this, but even if he holds this, I'm not sure he's going to actually have enough here to come back. He's trying everything he can to hold on to try and uh, to uh, come back and win this series, but I don't know if he has it in him. Uh, is A hero is popping out here at this very second. It is going to be Boromir once again. Has the horn ability available. It's going to throw it down immediately. Needs to start focusing down some of these units. Several units around the backside. But Army of the Dead spell goes down here for turn. He's destroyed enough buildings, and he has the power points. Boromir is going to get chased down, and with that, uh, Boromir falls. All of the units here for Turin basically destroyed, and DJ was going to surrender. Turin86 is the victor. He is the brother who has claimed the victory 3-2 to two over his brother, uh, DJ. So congratulations to Turin there. Really exciting series, guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, if you have replays you'd like me to cast, feel free to send them to mastercloudreplays at gmail.com. Uh, I will leave that email uh, in the description of the, uh, of the, below, beneath the video. Uh, thanks, for everybody, for tuning in. Mastercloud, signing out.